little drama going on today in the Holy Scriptures. Uh, that saying is part of the final discourse of Jesus in the Last Supper. But the drama is, I think, in the Acts of the Apostles, so relevant for today. Paul is, as you heard, Paul is brought before the court, the Sanhedrin and the Pharisees, and they want to condemn him for something or other. And what they're focusing on is that he's speaking about someone, Jesus, who rose from the dead. So they are against that concept of angels and people rising from the dead or life after death. But the other group, the Sadducees, believe in that. They believe in angels and life after death. So Paul is being torn apart verbally in front of them, and a great uproar occurs. So the guards take Paul away because they're afraid the Sadducees, Pharisees, are going to beat up on him. So they take him away. So we hear that going, and then we hear the Holy Spirit speaking to Paul. The Lord said, take courage, Paul, for just as you have borne witness to my cause in Jerusalem, before the Pharisees and Sadducees, so you must bear witness in Rome. So, thank you, Paul, but there's more coming. Thank you for bearing witness, but there's more witnessing to be done. In um, the Passover meal, the Jews have a song that signifies their faith in the idea of the Passover with all that God did for us. The song is... Dayenu, I'm not going to sing it for you, but Dayenu means, and that was enough, so God creates, and they sing Dayenu, that was enough, they sing it more poetically than that, um, God made the animals and the, and the people, Dayenu, that was enough, and then God did more, and then the stars and the world and the creation, and every time, Dayenu, he, he delivered us from Egypt, that was enough, Dayenu. But he did more. So God keeps doing more and more. And it's us through the eyes of faith who experience what he does for us that can appreciate it so we can say Dayenu. In a similar way, Dayenu is happening today to Paul. Paul's suffering. He, he was already beaten more than once. He's there standing witness and he, he calls upon his, his Pharisaical background. He was the son of a Pharisee. And because of that, and he's also a Roman citizen, he has the right in Roman law to go to Rome to stand judgment, not only this local judgment in Jerusalem. So Jesus says to him, the Holy Spirit, Paul, you did good, but there's more. And he goes to Rome. And eventually, you'll hear it in the Acts of the Apostles, he's tried, he's convicted, and he's beheaded. Paul, there's more. And I think that's important for us to realize that God has placed a lot before us. Yesterday I was talking to someone and she had had an accident and she's blaming God. If God let me move out of my house a few minutes earlier that day, I would have avoided the accident. And, and if God didn't want the accident to happen, he would have avoided the accident. You know, people lose, lose connection. When they want to blame God, they blame him. Uh, but we're in the world. The world runs by itself. It, it's going. God created it and set it into motion. And it's up to us as we live in the world to determine our reaction to the world, good or bad, to determine how we're going to participate in the world. And that's what, that's what God is waiting for. And he gave us his son, Jesus, to show how to act correctly. Do what Jesus did. Love, heal. Wash the feet of the disciples, go to the poor, feed the hungry. Jesus did all that. And God has put us, puts us in the world and says, okay, go, go for it. And we have the scriptures today that verify that, that confirm that. God didn't zoop down and, and protect Paul and put a little uh, hovel over him and say, oh, no, don't touch Paul, he's my, he's my guy. No, he says, Paul, there's more. You suffered now? There's more. Now, God is not doing the suffering, but God knows it. He knows of it. So God doesn't cause the suffering, but he gives us the strength to go through it when we suffer. And he gives us the strength to enjoy ourselves when we enjoy ourselves. So with these ideas in mind, we look today 
Just open up like the newspaper, open up the, the Twitters and open up the Facebook accounts and, and see what's going on. We, many of us, all of us, I, a lot of us, for the last few weeks have been following this actor and actress trial. I'm not going to name names, you know who they are. And yesterday the decision came down. Now, it involves billions of dollars, millions of dollars. But I mean, for us, for the average person, that's, that's stargazing. Wow, look at them, look what's going on in their lives. Who cares? They don't know you, and they'll never meet you, and you'll never meet them, believe me. So what happens, though? They become headlines. Everything they say and do, she did this, and he said that, and she did this. Oh, did you hear what he said? He said this. And all of a sudden, many in society are taken up with that garbage. But under, underlying that garbage is domestic violence. Now, there's the issue that we miss when we hear that the stars are fighting each other and they're suing each other. The bottom line is they were both involved with domestic violence. So we can't look at the stars. We can't look at the surface. We have to get to the deeper meaning of what's going on. One example. While that was going on, Ukraine was being bombed, the children in Texas were shot, and other violent actions happened throughout the world. Our economy is going down faster than we can imagine. But because the stars are on TV and because TV has given a lot of airtime to those stars and their negative inter interaction, that's what attracts the world. And yeah, I have to say, my gut, I, I think that's satanic. I think that's the devil distracting all of us from the authentic issues that are out there. Look at the stars and stargaze with them. Don't bother about Ukraine. Don't bother about the, the kids in Texas. Don't bother about other disasters. Look at this. This is really going to take you. And the number of people standing outside the courthouse is a segment of society. And you know what that's like. They represent so many other people. And again, Satan wins out, distracting us from the authentic issues at hand. Don't forget, God puts us in the world to take care of the world, to take care of the issues at hand. Satan comes in and says, I'm going to blind you to the real issues. Don't be concerned about U Ukraine. Don't be concerned about domestic violence. Don't con no, no. Be concerned about the stars, the superficiality of who they are and what they've contributed to society. See how the devil works? So we have that challenge in the scriptures today, and Jesus the Lord speaks to Paul and, and says, okay, you've suffered for me here, but you're going to go on and you're going to keep witnessing to me. So that's our role, to keep witnessing to the authentic issues of our church and our world, to keep witnessing, talking about, supporting the issues that surround bloodshed in Ukraine and, and the heartbreak. I, I, I still am overwhelmed at the amount of heartbreak that that one perpetrator caused in killing those children and those teachers and, and the ripple effect of all the families and the town that were affected by that. That's authentic. That's real. And yet the trial, the stargazing distracts us from that. Distracts many of us. All, I can't say that, but many of us. So Again, the scriptures are our guide. We need to look at the world and be in the world. And as the Lord says to Paul, take courage. For just as you have borne witness to me, witness means being a martyr, standing up for what you believe. Just as you've been witness to me, to my cause in Jerusalem, so must you bear witness in Rome. And Rome at that point was the center of the world. So you and I are in that second category. We have to bear witness to our faith, praying for Ukraine, praying for the families of Texas, doing the right thing politically and socially, standing up for what we believe and let others know that that's more important than this superficial trial, even though it cost millions of dollars. It's nothing. It's nothing. It's not worth one human life. It's not worth the life of any one child. 
and yet the devil inspires us. See, very subtle Satan is, very subtle. He inspires us through things that are here, right in front of our faces. Today we're challenged by the Holy Spirit to open our eyes, to speak for truth, to do, act for truth, and to believe the Lord is with us. Thank you.